Okay, so I'm here to talk about the Brooklyn Nets and the Boston Celtics game with my mate, Dave Moore. How you going, bud? How's it going? Good to be back. Good to be back. Good to be back. And the Celtics are winning, my friend. They are winning. You might notice in the background, I've got the, uh, the broom ready, preparing <laughs> for the sweep. For the sweep, indeed. Hopefully. Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> shots fired, Big T. Um, yeah, yeah, so... I've got the young goat behind me. He's been playing pretty amazingly. Um, yeah, so we'll have a look at the game today. So, Ime Adaku, dude, his defensive strategy on KD are going to go down to the annals of NBA history. What he's been doing yeah, in his last three games is just amazing. I, um, I haven't seen anyone do that to KD. Maybe, oh, maybe his last season in the Thunder, it might have happened a little bit, but it's, it's pretty rare. He's kind yeah. of been touted as the unstoppable scorer for a few years now and Celtics have managed to find a way to stop him and Kyrie at the same time and just kind of let Bruce Brown go off and you'll take that yeah about that from the stats from the game today that was they held Kyrie and KD to 16 points each which is kind of unheard of and they forced yeah. Bruce Brown to do all the scoring like you said he did okay he scored what 26 points I think 28 26 8 and 3 but yeah, to hold them two to 16 each, man, it's like it's a combined score of 32 points from KD and Kyrie, the most prolific scorers <laughs> in the league. He's just, it's outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any Anytime you've got Tatum beating, you know, their score combined just by himself, that's a pretty solid effort, as well as defending KD on the other end. I know, right? Just outstanding. And it's a lot of it's Tatum. His defense, he blocked yeah. KD, flat out blocked KD now. I don't think I've ever really seen someone ever block KD. And I think he's done it a couple of times. He's done it a couple of times this series now. And I'm just dumbfounded. He's actually got up there on all seven feet of KD taking his jump shot. So, yeah. Yeah. Tatum's a future goat. Like, I think he's going to have a bigger impact on the game than LeBron if he continues to play at this level and improving each year. And I know that's a massive statement, but he has that potential. He's kind of looking like um, prime Kawhi at the moment. With like the way that he's doing it on both ends. Oh. Like playmaking as well. It's unbelievable. Like he's it's... racking up at least five assists every game. I think he had six steals again today. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, he's on one. He's definitely on one at the moment. Um, but the thing about Ime Doku, he's, he's actually, so Brian Windhorse, I don't know if you know who he is or listen to any of his podcasts or anything like that. He, um, made his yeah. career out of following LeBron from a young career. And then now he's an ESPN analyst and everything like that. But um, yeah. he did this uh, piece where he was talking about how Ime Adoku is like basically done his 10,000 hours with KD and he's got like everything in here ready to go. Like he knows. Yeah. So he worked with him, get this with the Nets last year. He also worked with him, the assistant coach on the U S Olympic team. He's actually gone back. We're talking a long time here, all the way back to the Thunder. He's had all these interactions with KD, ever coaching with him or coaching against him. So he understands every aspect and element of his game. And he's like, he's probably the best person in the league to be able to formulate a defensive strategy against KD. And yeah, it's pain. Yeah, and then he's he's in Tatum's ear telling him what to do. Exactly. And he's got someone like Tatum to be able to actually like... like Yeah, it's it's, long enough to be able to defend Exactly. So it's it's... One thing being able to know how to shut KD down, but it's another thing being able to actually do it. And the fact that you've got Jason Tatum doing it at will, it seems at the moment, just like, mate, it's awesome and astonishing to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun just watching them defend as a team, just how quickly they can put the clamps on them, especially it was um, when they turned it around in game two, when the Nets had the 17 point lead. And then they came back at the end and took yeah. over with the. It just makes the offense so much easier for them. Was that in the first game? It was. And Tatum finished with that layup right on the buzzer. That was an amazing layup, too. Yeah. Just so clutch. Yeah. yeah. But like, instead of like, he's just, oh, I've got time to drive it. And he had the perfect amount of time to drive it. It was fantastic. Eh? Yeah. And Marcus Smart, too, like doing the shot fake. Eight, eight years I've been watching Smart take that shot every time as soon as he gets a ball in his hands and just fires away. But he had the maturity to 
shot fake and then and he got off. both defenders in the air stepped in fed the cutting tatum the way that yeah. team operates is just silk it's utter silk it's yeah pretty crazy man um yeah Ime Adoku. i think he just got coach of the year didn't he i believe um I'm not i sure believe he was just awarded coach of the year i'm not sure if it's the actual oh, nba well. one but a certain there was some um, organisational publication that awarded him their coach of the year. And I think yeah. rightly so. The way he's turned that team yeah, around. 100%. Like everyone said, they look like a basket case at the start of the year. And he's just like, no, I know what I'm doing. Just give me some time. And he got them all on the same page. So, yeah. Yeah, he did. Got them on the same page and they got healthy. And yeah, it's yeah. been pretty much unstoppable since then. And shout out to Marcus Smart as well, Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, very you well called deserved. That. Good you to called see. that the other week. I remember that. Um, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see a guard get it again. He's yeah, been, it um, is. Yeah, he's kind of been overlooked for a little while, and then probably it's, the last two or so years, he's been getting a little bit of noise around it. But this year, he's like he's just really turned it up to another level. And I think when Rob Williams went out and the defense kind of stayed on the same level, then it was like that's when he really took over the lead in the defensive player of the year stakes. I think. Yeah. Um, I think he's one of three guards in the last 40 years to have won Defensive Player of the Year. And the other two yeah. guards are Gary Payton and Michael Jordan. So good. Okay, so back to the game. Um, yeah, Tatum's defense on KD has been phenomenal all series, like we mentioned. Um, he also showed signs of dominating really early after the Nets got out to that lead and he just closed the gap. Just like, no, I'll just take this, yeah. shut that go up. Then he got everyone else going again. Then he injected himself again. He just knows when to go in and out of the game with ebbs and flows and get his team. That offense is, he, he's got it switched on now. He used to try to like take over the entire game and just do it all himself. Yeah. But now he's picking and choosing yeah. his moments, saving his energy for the defensive end as well as the offensive end. He's becoming the complete player. So I was just turning into a massive, massive um, Jason Tatum yeah. podcast right now at the moment. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> No, it's deserved though. Oh, it is yeah, deserved, man. He's a whole different level. It's yeah. I, even, whoever gets through this series of the Bulls, they've still got to get through Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics to get through to the yeah. So the round after that. So I can't. Yeah, it's either way. Even if we get through Giannis after the yesterday's effort, it's highly, highly unlikely. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't you know. Don't think the uh, the high IQ Ben Simmons is going to come in and save him game four. This is what I wanted to get to in a moment after we just have a bit of a breakdown <laughs> of the game. But so I actually yeah, yeah. do think he can impact the game massively, but it's just how much his body will allow him to do at the moment with his back the way it is. It ebbed and flowed with there. I think it got down to three again. Then um, oh. yeah, they just continually had had an answer every time the Nets went on a run. They answer back with you know then like a seven zero nine zero and kind of just yeah kept them in check the whole time really i think the closest it got was one or two possessions and that was it as soon as it got within that buffer they yeah. stretched it out stretch it out take it yeah. out to four possessions take it out to five possessions when yeah come back stretch it back out it was like yeah really well well managed so, yeah and that was a little bit of a worry coming into the playoffs i think just because they were really beating up on teams they didn't really have too many close games so I wasn't too sure if they'd kind of be able to do that. But yeah, they turned it up and it's looking pretty good. Oh, mate. Yeah, so um, got to the fourth. Nets kind of chipped away at the deficit. Yeah, they got it down to about five, like I said. Um, I don't think they really got it much lower than that. Oh, they might have got down to a three. One of the interesting parts, I think, was um, absolute shock was Blake Griffin coming on, started firing threes from yeah. everywhere. Yeah, but he was guarding... Um, <laughs> Jalen Brown and Jalen Brown was pretty much answering it back every three he sunk he sunk one back so yeah that was the thing it was like I think he came in and scored seven points pretty quickly but he gave up seven as well on the other end so yeah so that was yeah yeah, yeah but it was still fun to watch it was like ooh, this is yeah no it's, it's good to see him get back out there and he was giving it his all yeah yeah love to see it yeah Brown and Tatum were completely unconscious it's like yeah I, I, Brown's I, been consistently showing up in the fourth quarter. They've kind of sometimes they get stuck in these scoring lulls, and he's just every game so far in the fourth, he's stepped up. Yeah, and kind of nothing taken over. The, he's not hitting any rim. Yeah. yeah, it's just yeah, like I said, unconscious. So um, they finished game starts. 
Tatum had 39, 5, and 6 with six steals in there. Jalen Brown had 23 because he didn't really turn that scoring on, like you said, to the fourth. And that's when he kind of yeah. boosted his yeah. score out the third and the fourth when he was on Blake Griffin. Uh, he got four and five with two steals as well. And Marcus Smart contributed with his 14, three, six, and two steals as well. It's like, guys, yeah. e- even um, Tice played a really good game. He injected himself yeah, at the right and, time, hit, um, some work, hit some really timely shots. Yeah. Peyton Pritchard as well. I think you got 10 minutes. Yeah. Or 11 minutes and 10 points. 10 points. Four or five shooting. Like a little spark plug off the bench. So, yeah. That's time good. Lord was we back there today. Him for a little a bit. More. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't get really get much game He's time. Looking, but um, you just want him to get moving again and in the flow of the system again. So, he'll be at better as the seat yeah, goes. Exactly as he right. goes back on. He's coming back from that meniscus um, surgery. So, mate, that's a really quick return. Um, I hope he doesn't yeah. rush things at us all. So, well, I read after the game they said he could have gone for longer if they wanted to. They were just kind of testing him out. So his next minutes. game he might be kind of back to a full minute load. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Too easy, bro. Okay, so it's three nil up. Good luck with the rest of the series. Yeah. Tuesday, I'll be watching with a keen eye. Dude, I've got to get up at three o'clock in the morning to watch the Bulls game. So. That's rough. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, you could do that straight into a dawn service. I could. I could. <laughs> I think I might have to. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it may be somber. I may continue the somber event onwards. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you might, might be on high and then just have to really bring it down for an hour or so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a back and forth. There's a 24 hour roller coaster of emotions for me yesterday with um, the Bulls getting flogged in that uh, game yeah, yeah. by the Bucks, getting that like absolute drubbing. And then the Tigers winning that one pointer against South last night. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I'm all right. I'm back up yeah, on the high yeah. part of the roller coaster at the moment, not the low, but I'm sure the Bulls, well, let's, hope it, let's, yeah. let's hope it keeps going up. Okay. Let's just keep going. Keeps going what do you, up. what do you think their chances are now? Middleton out. I thought they kind of, cause they looked really close the first two games and then, well, they obviously got the win in that game two. They just, but they kept it really close in game one. And then I they slipped they back into an old pattern of just thinking yeah. once they'd won the game, they could, they need to keep the intensity they had from the first two games to even be a chance. And they didn't have it. And they kind of yeah. did in patches, but I think the big problem is just missing open shots, man. Like, mm, like yeah. the bucks are hitting yeah. theirs and we're not hitting ours and it's compounding at times. So like it did yesterday and they've got no answer for it once it gets beyond a certain point. So. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Hopefully they can get it together. Yeah. It would help if we had Lonzo. You know, so. Yeah. Life's a bitch, so. Yes. <laughs> hey, bro. I'll let you get back to your lovely Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah. All right. Just going to, yeah, keep watching this Penrith Raiders game. Yeah, I'm about to go check that out myself. Okay, so. Just got clear into my fantasy team, so hopefully right. he puts up some big numbers. There you go. Yeah, I actually won um, some money last week. I had twenty bucks on the Tigers at eight dollars fifty to win against Ooh, Parramatta. Nice. I couldn't not. Yeah, nice. It's twenty bucks to eight dollars fifty. Hundred and seventy bucks. They had to win eventually, right? Oh yeah, bro, for sure. Yeah, it was all. <laughs> it was even sweeter. It was against Parramatta. God, I hate yeah. Gutho. I hate him so much. <laughs> okay, bro.